Hi gents! Today I will show you a bit of a different way of processing your integrated circuits. Probably most of the chips these days have a gold as a something called bonding wires. These wires are really small and tiny wires, anything between 15 to 25 micron in diameter, and the alloy in use is about 99% of gold. Right now I have about 370 grams of different chips, and um, here's the tricky bit. Some of them indeed contain gold, some of them more, some of them less, and some of them do not contain any gold at all. The cheaper device from where you take in chips, the less gold it contains. Because these bonding wires may be made not only from gold, but also from aluminium, and from 2010, they may be made even from copper. Whenever you see EPROM type of chips, for different reasons, but it makes not too much sense to process them using this method. You need any other method for dissolving gold itself and bringing it back to solid state. In average, PGA type of chips contain more gold, but even then not always. For example, this particular chip has no gold at all. Also, it's much easier to process them. All you have to do is just to remove a base plate and you're ready for the next step. Right. As you can see, external contacts may be very long, and I recommend to get rid of them using really simple mechanical or chemical means, like uh, you may leave your chips to elements till contacts simply corrode and they will come off themselves, or you can cut them off using scissors, or like myself I used the bench grinder to remove them, and it was really quick. To be able to get gold bonding wires, you have to destroy a plastic case, and there is no cheaper or easier way than simply burning them. This is the most dangerous part. You see, this kind of smoke is really far from being healthy, so you better do it outdoors, or use some kind of combustion chamber. Also, there is another thing. You have to burn your chips till they're not black, but a bit grey and whitish in color. The better you burn them, the easier it will be all the next steps. After burning your chips, just crush them using any means. Myself, I crush them straight away in a pot using a bottle. If you burn your chips properly, it will be really easy. If not, you may struggle. What do you do now? Just crush your chips and filter them through kitchen sieve. Whatever do not go through sieve, just crush it again. You crush and filter it in that way, so that you will be left only with epic size of metal parts. Everything else, including contacts, magnetic or not magnetic, and pieces of silica, must go through a sieve. The reason for that is simple. They still contain broken gold wires attached to them. Whatever is left in a sieve, it may also contain a tiny bit of gold, or maybe some silver plating. So what I did, just wash them to remove possible loose gold and bin the rest. Next step, you will need a stainless steel pot. It's really important to make sure it's a stainless steel, not aluminium, or it will simply dissolve. Put inside whatever you manage to filter, all the dust, contacts and pieces of silica, and pour in some water. You may see some of the dust do not want to sink. Just add a little bit of caustic soda and leave it to stay overnight. Now is the funny bit. We will pan our gold using a kitchen pot, not a gold pan. Pour a little bit of water into your pot, let the sediment settle just for a couple of seconds and then very gently pour out about one third of the liquid. Repeat the process until the water becomes at least a little bit clear. Finally, what we ended up with a really huge amount of crushed silica and a lot of different contacts, and no sign of gold yet. There are quite a few videos on YouTube where some guys panning gold even from such a kind of mixture, but the truth is, you may be the best gold panner in the world, but because gold particles are less than 30 micron, you won't be able to pan gold unless you are prepared to lose two thirds of weight, or maybe even more. So let's do some magic. What you need is to make a very concentrated solution of caustic soda and to boil the remains of your integrated circuits for about an hour or so. What's gonna happen? Caustic soda will eat all silica and it will make something called liquid glass. Also, it will dissolve aluminium and maybe some other more reactive metals. After you finish dissolving silica, repeat the panning process, until all you have just some metallic contacts. As the next step, you have to dissolve just the base metals, again, 
You do not have to use any mega strong, dangerous or corrosive assets. You may leave your contacts to elements and sooner or later they will corrode to extent you will be able to pan the gold out of it. Or if you're patient, like myself, you may use parasitic acid or a lot of other things. I cover different nations in details in my other videos. Right now I'm matching using a mixture of hydrogen peroxide and sodium bisulfate, which is a cheap chemical for swimming pools called pH minus. And again, just repeat the panning process. As a result, I ended up with half a gram of almost pure gold. Not too much, but the good thing is I had a fun and it didn't cost me too much. If you like my videos, rate it, comment and thanks for watching.